Good day, everybody. My name is Cameron Turner, and I'm the founder and CEO of a uh, startup company called ProGel. Based here, yes, this is my real background. This is the, the backyard of my house in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. Um, and, uh, and I'm very thankful to be talking to you from uh, all around the world. Today, I'm going to be talking about a, a company that I helped establish and have been running for, uh, for nearly a decade now. And we have a, a micro encapsulation technology that is affordable, functional, bringing innovation to health, food and beauty and agricultural industries. On the front page there, you see a, one of our alginate microgels, a prebiotic microparticle. This is one of the products I'm going to be talking about. But today I'm going to be talking about um, our technology and, and how it works and how it is transforming the micro encapsulation industry globally. Um, but I'm also going to be talking more specifically about a new product that's launching this year called uh, an encapsulated lactoferrin, which is a dairy protein called inferrin. And you'll hear more about that a bit later. But as we get started, I guess really what I'll start with is talking about our technology and, and well, what is ProGel, what, what's the big deal? Well, what we do in ProGel is we take actives that are normally found in, um, in say pharmaceuticals or nutraceuticals or supplements, um, a number of functional foods. We take those actives and we turn them into great tasting, great experiencing fast moving consumer goods, consumer products, cosmetic products, et cetera. That's, that's what we do. Um, this probiotic microgel is an example of one of the microgels that we produce. This is about 30 or 40 microns in size. Um, and it's a nice round spherical particle. You can see the probiotic bacteria on the outside. It is a matrix particle. So you can, there'll also be probiotics all throughout the middle. So the particles we create as far as, as what do we create are, are low cost, they're very economically produced, they're tasteless. Um, we know that they're effective at delivering actives uh, in the gastrointestinal system and in other applications. And the system that we have produced has been patented and secured, patents granted all around the world. So how do we do this? And this is, this is the unique element of the ProGel technology. Is we take an active, uh, it might be an oil, it might be a, a, a water-soluble active, it might be a macromolecule. And we use our ProGel technology to create these calcium alginate microgels. These are small, typically less than 100 micrometers. They're all generally recognized as safe, biocompatible, biodegradable. And the process we have is, um, is, uh, is very scalable. And the beauty of these particles is not only are they nice round spherical particles, is that we can actually put layers around the outside of them. So that's how we do it. And effectively, Ed, the patented system we have is rather than the conventional system, which has been known for decades, which is spraying sodium alginate into a bath of calcium chloride, what Professor Bess Bandari, the inventor of this technology, determined is that if we spray those sodium alginate par um, particles into a mist of calcium chloride, we could, we could create a, a continuous microgel production system. And we could also control the particle size by controlling the particle size of the sodium alginate and the particle size of the calcium chloride. Because these two particles collide in the chamber and they cross-link instantaneously and then fall out the bottom of the device. Okay, this small but really powerful uh, invention has meant that we can move from a batch-related production system to a continuous production system. And it means we can also fine tune the particle size. So we can get very small particles at very large volumes. So why, why do we do this? Why is this important? Why is this a big deal? Well, we know that there's a lot of challenges and opportunities in the functional foods, nutraceuticals, and even the beauty industry around delivering products that have great taste, delivering products that are stable, either in product or through the gastrointestinal system, delivering products that actually ha have, um, ha have, uh, are efficacious, that actually work and deliver on what they say they're going to do. And we can also uh, use this technology to have um, controlled or targeted release delivery systems. So that's why we think this technology is a game changer. Low cost, highly scalable, small particle size that does these things. The first product we've created is a, is a, is a probiotic product. And we developed not only the ingredient, but then we subsequently developed a finished product. That product is called Perky. And this product is now sold nationally throughout Australia, New Zealand, through the major supermarket chains, um, through thousands and thousands of, uh, of outlets around Australia. And we hope to be exporting this product around the world shortly. This was really our first, I guess, attempt to scale up the technology and to make it into an industrial product. The reason why we focus on probiotics is because we knew we had a technology that could solve probably the, one of the biggest problems that probiotic products have, which is how they die in, in the stomach. So you can see here, and this is generally published data, shows that probiotics that are unencapsulated typically die within five to 10 minutes in the stomach, in the acidic stomach at pH 1.2 to 1.5. When we encapsulate the probiotics, um, we can keep them alive for up to an hour in those same pHs. 
And so we knew that we could, we could actually deliver a much more highly viable dose of probiotics into the, um, into the gastrointestinal system where they can actually have benefit. We also knew, and I haven't got the data here, that we could encapsulate probiotics and keep them alive in product. And in fact, the Perky product, we keep probiotics alive for four months over 1 billion probiotics. And, and that has been a game changer in the probiotic category in Australia. So and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this, but uh, the second product, which is being launched uh, later this year globally, is an encapsulated lactoferrin, which is a dairy protein. Um, and this is going into a whole range of products um, that boost the immune system. Uh, and I'll talk about this in a lot more detail a bit further, but this is the second license we've had with the ProGel technology. Let me talk to you a little bit more about how the ProGel technology works. So, so effectively, this is some, some graph, some data from uh, encapsulated curcumin. And what we found here, and, and this again is quite common for, for alginate microcapsules, is that we can delay that release. So you can see in the first graph, by just changing the calcium chloride concentration, um, we can actually change the release kinetics of these microgels. So you, you can see here that at 0.1 molar calcium chloride solution, we've got most release within sort of four hours and entire release within five to six hours. If we increase that calcium chloride concentration up to 0.5 molar, we actually can delay that release profile right out to eight to 10 to 12 hours. And in fact, if you see in this graph here, with some work we've done on, on uh, ibuprofen, um, you can see that when we've encapsulated ibuprofen, there's no release under that acidic conditions. But once we put it in a phosphate buffer simulation of the intestinal environment, we can get release within sort of 100% release within four hours, or we can push that release right out to about 14 hours. And go this tun tunable um, release system is really interesting for, for both not only humans and animals, but also insects in terms of how we actually manage and monitor that oral um, delivery system. So I want to talk a little bit about the particles themselves. So this is just some work we've done with various oils. So between 32 and 77% oil encapsulation. And we know there's a lot of opportunities for different lipids in encapsulation. And you can see here that the particle size distribution is, is, pretty, is pretty tight. Um, we're looking at typically the majority of the particles between be, being between around 20, 30, up to 80, 90, 100 micro, um, micro, um, micrometers. Uh, and this demonstrates that we can really control those particle size and keep them by and large below 100 micrometers, which is that detectable limit for the, uh, for the mouth. So we can also use these particles when, they're, when, they're, they've, been, um, when they've been uh, condensed into, uh, into things that can be used for texture modification. And so this is a, a slow release microbead that could be used in dermabrasives or exfoliants. Um, and it can, be, it can be helped to have controlled release activities and can be also used for oil encapsulation release, or it could even be used as a functional um, food filler or even a fat replacer to have that texture modification. We have, we have successfully scaled the technology up. You can see the progression from the invention on the far left-hand side, which was one kilo an hour, up to our, um, our, our small scale commercial prototype, which produces 200 plus kilos an hour of, uh, of small alginate microgels. Now, the beauty of this system is that that device on the right, um, that, uh, that is what we use for commercial production of probiotics for the probiotic um, uh, Perky um, probiotic product. That particular device cost about 10,000 um, Australian dollars or, or about 7,000 US dollars to build. Okay, so it's very scalable, very low cost, very low capex equipment. So now we really wanna talk a little bit about lactoferrin. So what is lactoferrin? So lactoferrin is this iron binding glycoprotein found in milk. Okay, it's, it's not only found in cow's milk, but, but fundamentally it's found in, in human breast milk. And it's, it's so important for life. It's, 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 um, it's one of the most functional food uh, proteins found in breast milk, which is what gives babies their immune, immune system. It helps to deliver, take iron around the body. It's, it's fundamental to the, um, to the success of, of young babies when they're born. Now we know that a lot of babies can't get breastfed for, for uh, certainly not for, for six to 12 months. And so what the industry has done is they've created um, bovine lactoferrin um, and, and that's been added to a lot of milk products around the world. Um, unfortunately, it takes 10,000 liters of bovine of, of milk to make one kilo of bovine lactoferrin, and so and so that's really challenging. And so it's this has become a more and more expensive ingredient. Um, however, the, the challenge is is that is that this protein is very sensitive to very sensitive to uh, to degradation in the stomach, and so that's why it's very effective in babies and infants where they don't have a very advanced stomach and there's not a lot of acid in the stomach but it really does struggle to provide benefit in, in adults um, because the protein gets broken down. Um, so we know that, 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 um, that lactoferrin is, is really important in, uh, in infants, um, not only from breast milk, but also in infant formula. 
from from um, uh, in in uh, in infant formula products using bovine lactoferrin. And so I guess our objective in working with Bigo uh, by Nutrients, which is one of the world's biggest lactoferrin manufacturers, is well, how do we deliver this benefit to humans? How do we take this benefit into into adult humans who have a a more advanced gut that have an acidic stomach? And that's the project we've been working on with Bigo by Nutrients. Um, so so there's really been you know 70 years of research into into lactoferrin and, and how it can actually deliver benefit. You know, it boosts the immune system. It has antimicrobial properties. It can actually be beneficial for, for acne. Um, it can stimulate growth of good gut bacteria and, and healthy gut development. And, and certainly, uh, lactoferrin is really effective at being able to move iron around the body. So it's really important for iron absorption and iron distribution through the body. So this is a really important protein in the human system. And we know that it's, it's only really available through breast milk and, and through, um, through bovine milk. Um, but, but not when you're drinking normal milk, it doesn't have enough. And that lactoferrin typically gets killed off in the stomach. So lactoferrin has enormous product applications. It's not in a lot of these products, but we think it has enormous opportunities in a lot of these different products, in beverages, in personal care, animal health, um, and a whole range of dietary supplements and pharmaceuticals. Now, it's really limited at the moment to, um, to infant formula um, because there's not a lot of it and it's, and it's actually really expensive and, and it doesn't really work in adult products because it breaks down in the stomach. Well. Well, that's a, that's a problem that Progel is, um, ha, ha, believes we have solved. So we know that this has a, a, a multi-pronged role in supporting immune health. Um, it has direct antibacterial activity, it has antiviral activity, and it also has immunomodulatory and anti-inflammatory activity. So, so this is a really important protein that delivers and offers a lot of benefit right, right around the world. So it really has this, this quite um, effective ability for immunomodulation. So we know that it supports the immune system by having the capacity to act as both an anti-inflammatory and an immunomodulatory agent. Okay, this dual ability of increasing interest as it helps to stimulate the immune system to counteract pathogenic invasion and prevent harmful host immune and inflammatory responses. You can see here, it's just, just some of the evidence of how this actually delivers benefit to the immune system. There's been an enormous amount of research. So there's huge numbers of references on the um, bacteriostatic and the bactericidal activity. Um, there's so many different papers um, that have been published around how lactoferrin can actually have these antibacterial um, benefits. And it really works through, through I guess, these two different mechanisms, this barrier um, bacteriostatic process where the lactic, lactoferrin can sequester iron away from the bacteria, starving them of, of the iron nutrient that's necessary for the growth. But it also is bactericidal, which means that it can bind to the surface components of these microbial cells causing bacterial cell death. Okay, so through these two mechanisms, it can actually have this, this, um, this beneficial bactericidal activity uh, against nasty bacteria like E. coli and, and a number of um, nasties that really help affect human health. We also know it has antiviral activity. And this is really exciting part of um, lactoferrin because it has this broad spectrum antiviral activity. So again, you can see the extensive research both in vitro and in vivo, as well as in clinical um, um, double-blind placebo-controlled trials of how lactoferrin can, can really have this significant antiviral activity. In fact, there's, there's a number of, um, of trials around the world, even at, even at the moment as we speak, um, that are looking at, at, um, at, at double-blind placebo-controlled trials, looking at, at adults and at, um, and at children and at the aged, looking at all of these different effects of how um, lactoferrin can actually boost the immune system. But we still have a problem is that it, it actually doesn't work in adults if it's, unless it's you know, enteric coated, which means it's quite limited in terms of applications to, um, to enteric coated capsules. I guess the antiviral activity mechanism you know, is really represented as, as how we have these three different modes of action. And I'll, I won't go to the, through this in great detail, but, but the, the science is really well established about how lactoferrin works. Um, in some of the human clinical trials, we know that from, um, from work done on, on in children in these clinical trials, that lactoferrin can significantly reduce the number of absent days from preschool children by up to 49%. You can see in this, um, this clinical trial with preschool children aged three to six years, um, that we found a 49% reduction in absent days from preschool versus uh, control group. So that's a significant immune effect of lactoferrin given um, to, um, to children. Uh, also looking at the it, reducing the incidence of, of stomach troubles by by, um, by 33%. So in, in 12 to 32 month toddlers, again, we found that a 48 milligram dose of lactoferrin added in growing up milk um, can have a 33% reduction in, uh, in the prevalence of stomach troubles. Okay, so this is a, these are significant, um, significant results in placebo controlled trials, even looking at adults. Um, 
in healthy adults aged 20 to 20, 20 to 65, we found in these controlled studies that lactoferrin reduced the severity of colds, stomach colds, in healthy adults by 33%. Uh, but you can see the amounts of lactoferrin having to increase, and, and, and that's part of the reason why the progel technology is so important to this immune boosting protein. That's why we've developed the, um, the world's first microencapsulated lactoferrin in partnership with Vega Bionutrients, which is called Inferrin. And this Inferrin is going to transform the, the immune, the immune um, product category as well as the, uh, the protein product category. So what is Inferrin? So Inferrin, where we take bovine lactoferrin, we collect the milk, we separate it, then we microencapsulate it using Progel's technology. Um, the product is then freeze dried and packed and then shipped. And this product is going to be shipped all around the world into Europe, into, in, through Asia, um, through North America, um, and we'll be finding its way into products that will be launched in the last half of 2021. Probably the best time given the, the issues we have with COVID and the, uh, the challenge to our immune system. So lactoferrin is, is, is first produced in fresh pasture-fed cow's milk um, using this, this very sophisticated low temperature um, separation and purification process. We then use the ProGel microencapsulation system to microencapsulate it. Uh, and then dry the products um, in using a freeze dryer. And then that product is going to be delivered in bulk powdered format that can be going into many different um, dosage formats and different products. Um, the, 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 um, the bigger inferrin product is non-GMO, it's gluten and lactose free, um, and is, is potentially going to be halal and kosher certified, um, just pending certification. So we, we know that, and we've done some clinical trials on the progel encapsulated lactoferrin or inferrin. Inferrin, we know, improves the survivability of lactoferrin through the gastrointestinal system. So this was, this was critical in terms of our understanding of the value add that Progel makes to the lactoferrin protein. Okay, being a protein, lactoferrin is very sensitive to chemical and heat degradation. Okay, this means that we need really high doses required for efficacy. And with the prices we speak, um, sitting at around $1,500 a kilogram, um, bearing in mind 10,000 litres per kilogram of lactoferrin, um, the, the dosage level is really important. And so what we've been able to find is that we can use the, um, the, the patented microencapsulation technology to protect lactoferrin from a chemical attack by the acids and digestive enzymes as it goes through the stomach. Okay, we know that we can ensure lactoferrin is more biologically active and effective by delivering it intact into the small intestine where it acts on its targets. Uh, and it actually helps to broaden the potential applications of lactoferrin both in dietary supplements and food products. And that's just not really possible with, without an encapsulation system to put lactoferrin into, into various food products. You can see here in the graph on the, on the right-hand side that, um, that we can demonstrate that, that over 60 minutes, there's a significant increase in viability over 60 minutes compared to an unencapsulated lactoferrin. You can see here in terms of the ability to survive transit through the gastrointestinal system, we can see substantial lactoferrin activity um, in, in, as a result of the human um, digestive system in, fe in fecal um, lactoferrin observations um, after a significant period of time. So we can see that this can sustain itself and it can actually have a lasting immune benefit. Um, but what we've also done is we've actually looked at, at some clinical research to look at its, its uh, microbial species in fecal matter and how it can actually reduce the, the, some of these nasty activities. So you can see E. coli um, and a number of these um, bacteroides, intestinal um, and fecal bacteria, some of these nasties that we can actually get a significant reduction in some of these negative bacteria um, over, over time by having an encapsulated lactoferrin. So this was a long-term four-week trial. We also found that we could get a, a significant change in the cytotoxic T cells before and after this four-week treatment. So you can see that the inferrin significantly reduced these cytotoxic T cells. Um, and we also found that we could get a significant change in the, um, in the, uh, the T um, helper cells before and after this four-week treatment. So you can see um, there's really good in vitro data to support how lactoferrin is working. And we've got a very large um, in vivo and in vitro trial going at the moment. So I guess the features of this um, lactoferrin, um, encapsulated lactoferrin called inferrin, um, you know, we have this proprietary microencapsulation system. So the ProGel technology, which is patented and protected all around the world, has been licensed exclusively to Vega Bionutrients. And this product, um, they're just finishing the commissioning of their um, production system in, um, in Australia, in, in uh, Victoria. Uh, and that product is going to uh, hit the market in the next in the next six months. Um, we know it has a controlled release property. It's suitable for multiple delivery formats, for, for, um, for powders, for foods, for products, for drinks. Uh, it, it comes with a very low water activity. It's clearly Australian made, which gives it a, a great tick, particularly in the Asia Pacific region. Um, 
It's made with safe food, food grade um, grass materials. It has been um, fundamentally clinically researched and we know it's suitable for consumers two plus years, which is really critical because the less than two year olds um, you know, uh, have got a higher likelihood of having conventional lactoferrin. So we think that the adults are really gonna be very interested in this product. So these unique product applications of the, um, the ProGel lactoferrin, um, it has a unique ability to stabilize lactoferrin and deliver it intact to the small intestines. When, uh, when put into a variety of product formulations. Um, it supports a lower dose, um, which means that the reduced, significantly reduced cost in use. It offers a, a formulators and product manufacturers a, a strong USP over other lactoferrin products. Um, has a very low water activity, means it can be combined with a number of probiotic products, which opens a whole new range of potential immune boosting products. Um, and it's made with food grade materials, so it's suitable for a wide range. So we think this is gonna find its way into dietary supplements, foods and beverages, um, nutritional powders and even animal health products, high value animal health products. So look, as I get to the end of this presentation, the, uh, the ProGel technology, you know, what we've found is that rather than, and we're talking to companies all around the world about how to use our ProGel technology. And what we find is that alginate encapsulation has been used extensively for, for decades now, but not really commercially because no one's really found a way. There's a few companies that are producing micro encapsulated alginate beads, but but the capital cost of producing large volumes of very small particles is, is quite staggering. So really for the first time, ProGel's been able to find a way to produce these very small, less than 100 micrometer particles um, at a large scale at a very acceptable cost. And so we're working all around the world um, with companies and, and some of the products we think there is opportunities for is we believe that there would be enormous opportunity for something like a slow release caffeine and encapsulated caffeine that can release slowly over time. We're doing work on a range of brain um, stimulating products. So omega-3s and brahmi, the plant herb, which tastes really disgusting, um, but has been shown to have really significant clinical benefits in terms of improving and boosting the, the brain activity and memory. Women's health, so, so encapsulating things like calcium and iron. You know, iron has enormous trouble uh, in terms of uh, flavor protection in, in drinks and in foods. And so we've been able to encapsulate iron. Um, immunity, so we've encapsulated curcumin and a whole range of vitamins which are very sensitive to oxidation um, and tend to degrade. Vitamin C is a real problem. Uh, a number of companies have talked to us about encapsulating vitamin C. Plant sterols, which have taste issues and stability issues, um, opens the door to create new heart health products. Um, we're doing a lot of a, num a number of projects around the world looking at proteins and amino acids for both animals and humans to, to boost protein production um, and to stimulate a whole heap of functional um, actives in the, in the human body. Um, and so we're also working with, with some of the world's biggest flavor and aroma companies around encapsulating flavors and into, um, into because obviously the beauty of alginate is that it's a vegan based delivery system. So, so we think there's real opportunity around encapsulating flavors and aromas in a, in a vegan based delivery system. Um, and also we think there's a quite significant potential in the beauty category. What, one of the things that I haven't really highlighted, which is a really important cr criteria for, um, for ProGel and for alginate microgels, is that they're, they're, they potentially can form the functional job of microplastics. So they, they, we think that, that our technology, because we can make very small particles um, at a very low cost, a very high scale, we think the ProGel microgels can actually take a, a form of replacing a number of microplastics in a whole range of beauty and cosmetic products, toothpaste, face creams, shampoos. We think that, so not only can it provide that, that, um, that exfoliant type application and that, um, that texture modification, but it can also be used at the same time to deliver functional actives that actually deliver benefits and, and can release. So we think um, ProGel is gonna have a significant effect, demonstrated through probiotics, demonstrated through lactoferrin or inferrin, and soon a whole range of other products. So look, we'd be really happy to talk to you at some point during this conference or at another time. Um, we have at ProGel, we have the, the team, we have myself, Dr. Su Hong Ching, who's the, uh, the CTO for ProGel, as well as the inventor, Professor Bess Bandari, one of the world's leaders in food engineering and microencapsulation. Um, we have a team that can actually work with you to try and identify applications and solve problems that are important to you. We have pan granted patents. We're a profitable company. Um, we are returning dividends to shareholders. We have a significant deal pipeline, and we are now looking to expand in various food, health, and ag applications. Uh, and we're also in early stages of exploring cosmetic and, and even construction opportunities. So, so look, thanks very much for your time. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you. And, and look, um, I, I look forward at my, my email is at the bottom there. So please reach out, connect with me on LinkedIn um, or send me an email directly. I'd love to talk to you about how the ProGel technology can be available to you as a license 
um, to be able to, to, to deliver value to your, to your customers and to your, um, to your shareholders. So all the best and, uh, and I hope to hear from you soon. Cheerio.